Tara and Roy presented last year, great talk. This year, um, just, uh, just with some research that they've done, uh, just very, oh, uh-oh, what happened? No, just very interesting research on ethics and, and with uh, red teams. So without Plus further ado, uh-oh, they're setting their timers. Okay, put, 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 like I feel like I'm talking to my 14-year-old. Put your phone down, come on, come on, come on. All right, yeah, okay, they're taking my mic. Okay, it's time to go. All right, so hello fellow kids. This year I get to kick it off, Tara kicked it off last time. Uh, I'm Roy Iverson, uh, this is Tara. For those that uh, don't know who we are, um, Roy Iverson, I work for Hi. Work for uh, uh, Fortalist Solutions, Director of Security Engineering and uh, Operations there. Uh, I love dad jokes, I love great food. Uh, I pretend to be a hacker and uh, dream of going back to scuba diving someday when I have time, and Tara? Uh, and I have been known to do some corporate things. Right now I'm a cybersecurity policy fellow at New America. I am a poker player and I am a baby pilot. And the only thing we could figure out that was the Venn diagram between me and Roy is that we are both giant supernatural fans. So there's your middle graphic in the middle. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, this is why we're here today. Roy, kick us off. Okay, I will, I will grab this one. So clearly we've got stuff that we're talking about right now. We've got headline news right now about how hackers behave, uh, what we are and aren't allowed to do. And very, very fortunately, one thing we saw last night, this is, this is pretty current information, right? We saw our brothers at Coal Fire get released finally yesterday, right? So what we do on tests matters. Let's talk about what's right and what's wrong. So here's what we've done so far. All right, so we were gonna drop this slide, but it was too good to, uh, it was, it, the pun was just too good. I, I made um, him keep it, the pun had your, to happen. That's your bribe, that's your bribe. <laughs> so uh, anyway, what do we do so far, right? Um, quick recap, we started talking about this, uh, Tara and I, back in the summer of 2018, and decided to do some research on ethics, because there wasn't a whole lot of stuff out there. There is good research, uh, but uh, what we're talking about here, there wasn't really anything that touched upon that. Uh, so we basically uh, did research, we presented here last year at Shmook on Fire Talks, thank you. And uh, after that, uh, the community here helped us out with uh, first one survey uh, in February, then a second one built on the results of the first one, with, you know, we got a lot of good feedback on what to do better. Um, then we did some data mining and we did some more research and now we're here talking to you about the results of that. We asked for a lot of people to provide us with their opinions on what they thought was or wasn't okay to do in a red team test. Uh, how many people in this room were at Fire Talks last year? Awesome. I hope some of you remember us doing uh, the survey requests last year as well too and maybe had a chance to do it on your phones, something like that, or saw us send these requests out last year uh, in April and May for more responses. Well, we got a lot of responses this time. So, um, yep. Tara, what did the survey look like? The survey, tell me about the survey. So we had a series of questions that were similar to but improved in language on the survey that many of you folks saw last year. We asked questions about bribery, uh, threatening executives, children, phishing, uh, planting legal documents, planting illegitimate material on someone's computer. We asked questions about a lot of different things you could do to see if it would work to break into a company. And we got some really amazing responses. And you know, oh. what's important about the, the, the mm -hmm. questions up here, which are small, but it's for people reading at home, mm -hmm. um, it basically, it's, it goes with the gamut from something as simple as sending a phishing email, is that cool, to, all the way to, you know, is it okay to plant fake illegal content on someone's computer to blackmail them into cooperating with you? Yep. Is it? Well, I don't think so, but that's is not it? the point here, right? We got responses from all over the world, about 70% from North America, about 20% from Europe, and about 10% from the rest of the world, including the Middle East, Africa, and South America. And these are the responses we got from individual job roles when we asked about this in the survey. We asked questions and then found out if people were IT but not security, not IT at all, red team and pen tester who tests internally, red team pen tester who does third party, and then just general security but not on the red team or pen testers. I think they were llamas. They were llamas. All right, so who objected to what? We're gonna tell you in order what these look like. Who said what was wrong? All of these are objected to as we yep. go through. So, um, and again, it, you know, 
we're compiling the data here and uh, going through it. The results were really, really interesting. Yeah. So um, if you compare IT to people who are not on IT, uh, people who are uh, not in IT generally objected more to these tests than people in IT. Surprise, surprise, right? Um, and uh, how much did they object to this, right? So uh, if, you look at, if you look at the differences here, just to go back a slide, um, you, know, you can see the differences there. But when you start looking at the factor differences and how different they are, it's, it's, it's really fascinating, right? So Nine sure. times the number of people objected to being fished who were from outside technology as those who were in tech whatsoever. Nine times the number of people thought it was never okay to test whether or not they would respond to a phishing email at all, even for the purposes of validating and verifying security. Factor of nine. And, you know, similar differences in, uh, between security, people who were, you know, we counted the red teamers, the, you know, in both categories, and anyone who identified as being in a security team in this group versus all the other groups. Again, two to four times more likely to object to some of these tests than, than others. And I'm not explaining why this is, the data doesn't show that, but, um, you know, the, the, the fact that these things are, are here, the data shows this, uh, is something that you, know, you need to be considering later on when you're planning out your tests. You and can see right in here that there's a four-factor objection for testing whether or not you can lie to the receptionist to get information out of them from people who aren't in technology versus people who are in security. And uh, in addition, there, there were geographic differences uh, on, on you know, basically what people objected to versus not. Mm -hmm. Geographic differences. So it turns out we, uh, just so you folks know, and we'll tell you this a little bit later on and give you an address, we've released the sanitized and redacted data from all of our data sets on our GitHub that we'll give you later on. That included IP addresses, which we did not release to the public, as well as cities. Those have been redacted from the data we've released. What we were able to do, however, was get some reasonably decent location data on most of these responses. And that tells us there are some really cool differences in how people view certain kinds of security tests from region to region. For instance, we see that Asian respondents are in general less likely to object overall to any of these tests if it's for the good of the organization. Australians and New Zealanders object to almost all these tests in general more than anybody else, which is Crazy, because they're so much fun, like in real life, right? You want to <laughs> hang out with them a lot. Uh, you know, we get the Middle East and Africa respondents were, in fact, more likely to object to lures that use threats of legal action or bribery, really, really dismayed by that particular one, and show that in a factor response. And uh, if you look at uh, South America, um, they tended to be, uh, object more to fishing your VIPs. Mm -hmm. And let's make a note here, too. The amount of data we have, I think we ended up with something like, after cleaning and removing a couple of all y'all trolls out there, we ended up with 546 responses total, I think, to this. 41. that were 541. Um, well, you got picky. <sighs> so 541 total responses. And what we ended up doing was seeing that while we got good enough data to make some broad generalizations, some of these are not statistically valid yet, which we'll talk about in a, in a moment. Just be aware, we're looking here at some pretty crazy geographic differences in what is or isn't okay with people. Fishing yep. VIPs is super fine in Asia, but they really object to that in South and Central America. And bribes were very frowned upon in, in uh, Middle East and Africa. Mm -hmm. And Oceania, they hate that as well too. Yep. Most disapproval. So uh, there's more. And also there's a bribe in here. Do you see that on the left? Um, Here's your bribe. There was uh, A-B testing thanks to uh, our wonderful friend Anna who basically said mm -hmm. we should include it. So what's, what does that mean? Uh, so who ended up, I know some of you did and raised hands in here, at least one or two people took the bigger survey that we sent out uh, in April and May. Not everybody got the same survey. There were two different questions with all the same answers. One question essentially asked, is it okay to use this tactic when testing someone in a red team? And the other one said, is it okay for someone else to use it on you? And that's huge. That's, that's huge. That is called a framing response, yes. That's a framing problem, and we're gonna see this up here. The responses were dramatically different. So, what the results show that it doesn't matter if you're red team or, uh, or not, if you're security or not, mm -hmm. if the test is happening to you, if you're the, you know, on the you know, end point of the test, 
you are one and a half to four times more likely to object to these, uh, the ones we have on screen here, uh, uh, <laughs> typical tests. And overall, you seem to care more about mm -hmm. having tests done against you. It, yes. it just goes to show how much those phishing tests piss people off. Imagine impersonating a VIP. Oh, let's, uh, let's pop back one more minute. Take a look at the impersonation of a VIP. You can see two times as many people thought it was perfectly okay to impersonate a VIP at someone else's company than they thought it was okay to have someone else do that to them in such a way that would make them or their CEO look like a fool. All of a sudden, as soon as you start to think to yourself, wait a minute, the question is, is it okay for someone to do this to me? You start to realize that what we're dealing with here aren't targets, they're people. And if you think of yourself as a person and experiencing these, all of a sudden your reactions change by a factor of two. You are half as likely to think any of these things essentially are okay if the test is being done on you. So the conclusion here, you know, is we're bad at being objective. Um, and we don't want your takeaway to be don't do these things that we talked about. We want you to think about them as you're planning them. We want to have you discuss them internally with your teams. Don't just do it because the rules of engagement allow you to. You know, think about, is it a good idea for me to alienate myself or potentially alienate myself from my, the people in my company, you know, it, you know, just to test this one thing? Um, you know, should this be a tabletop? Should this be something that you outsource to a different company to test? Um, those are, those are all, all uh, you know, important things to be aware of. When you are scoping, when you're doing scoping documents for a red team test in future, what this tells you is that you not only need to be aware of the impact of each of these individual tactics on the people that you're targeting, but you also might need to be aware of what geographic location you're testing in. Uh, one of the things that we recently saw, especially with the coal fire situation, is that there was a jurisdictional contest happening there, right? It's the state authorizing pen tests of county, courthouse, county courthouses in order to validate that documents are being kept safely, and it's the county objection, objecting to it. You need to be aware of the jurisdictions, the locations, and the feelings of the people involved. So remember in that case, it was the county sheriff who objected to being made to look a fool. And that is part of the issue with this, the, the, the way that we think about these tests. You have to think about the impact of, on the person. So where do we go from here? Uh, for our next steps, you know, we're looking for a home for the research. Uh, Tara and I have been doing this in our spare time. It's been fun. It's not a lot of work, uh, you know, sending out a survey or whatever. But, um, we're getting to the point now where if we want to move it forward, it has to get bigger. Uh, we need, you know, some place to host it, uh, you know, someone to support it. Uh, we're looking at getting new surveys with better sample sizes. Uh, you know, for some of the geography stuff, like we talked about, sample sizes are, are small enough that, you know, yeah, you know, what if all the people in South, South America were on the red team, right? Um, we, and, and, and to that point, uh, we also need help because I can only get so far in our studio. And uh, he gets a long way in our studio. It's I'm, pretty awesome. I did not do those graphics. <laughs> I am not a data scientist by, by, by trade. But um, if any of you out there um, you know, watching this or in the audience here uh, are interested and, and, mm -hmm. and know uh, data science, we'd love to have your help and, uh, and others come up with better questions. And there's two points on that too. Neither one of us are data scientists, but I am a social scientist by academic training. And it's been like 15 years since I did a research methodology or a survey design class. I can't do this up to date anymore. And one of the things we're pretty sure of is that women and underrepresented populations probably answered the I'm not really in security question differently. Uh, and so we wanna make sure that we're not skewing this data by analyzing it according to job role differently than it would be assessed objectively. So we do need that help. And it's not a lot of time, but it's really cool to see the results pop up in our studio, which he is way better at than he's taking credit for. Um, we've got mm -hmm. sources and resources on the slide for later if you wanna read it. Um, we do have uh, our redteamethics.com domain that redirects to our GitHub. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is Red Team Ethics. And uh, we're gonna, uh, we already uploaded our slide deck and uh, some, uh, some uh, other information there, uh, research paper. But uh, I wanna say thank you to uh, all of you, the community, helping us out with this, to 
the Fire Docs for hosting us last year and this year, our colleagues and friends, and special thanks to Anna and, and, uh, and Adaya for, for helping us out. Adaya Queen, a wonderful Woo! cadet, and, and also Deviant for some graphics help too. Thank you so much. All right, that's okay. our website. Right. And thank you for listening. Thank you. I think you got a question. Do they have time for a question? W one question. They have one over there. Make it simple. I'd love to see it compared to what's acceptable in terms of library viewpoint and to um, high, high that, that really huge. Thank you. And the second thing is, uh, are the people that don't want it to come like just your battle? Maybe, or maybe they see, it, see the value in the tests. Maybe they see how important they are because they're either red team or security people or something else. I don't know. No. Uh, fun fact: we found out by SurveyMonkey after the fact that hey, it collects your your location IP data. So which we. Yeah. We no. We. we yeah, check the white paper. <laughs> so <laughs> VPNs, there's a lot of different right. things with VPNs oh. that you could, could oh, yeah. throw this off. So yeah. we, we, we're aware of that. So don't put too much value into this. The, the, the takeaway is think about it. This is important. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for listening. All right. Thank you guys for bringing this back again. I definitely am more on board even more so this year than last year. I think what you guys do are very is very important. I do, thanks to the Mr. Gentleman from RIT for asking the question I was gonna ask in regards to the IP and location data. Um, I love your speaking style. I think that the back and forth work, works very well. I did really enjoy the beginning of your slides immensely, very nicely put together. And overall, Again, I, I love your call to action, and I do see the value in trying to clean the data up, because I, I think you're seeing some initial results, but I'm looking forward to seeing what, what that extraction would really look like. Thanks. So you guys have given this talk elsewhere before, correct? Yep. No, nope. This is the first time? First yeah. time here. Okay. This talk and information has gotten rejected from kind of a lot of cons, because no wow. one knows what to do with it. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, which is unfortunate, because my next question was, what was your feedback has been? And obviously you haven't had any, which is unfortunate. I think this is very, very important, uh, very, very illuminating, especially as somebody who's on the offensive side and does a lot of pen testing work. Uh, the fact that you are establishing societal norms based on the work that we do, I think is very important. Uh, as Bruce mentioned in the opening ceremonies, it's a very young industry. We don't know what the societal norms are. Uh, and if we're here to fight for the user, we need to know what the user expects and, and demands, right? Exactly. Um, uh, so a plus one point for releasing your data onto GitHub, uh, and plus a bazillion points for doing all this in your spare time and not having actually any support. Um, so thank you very much for bringing, doing all this work and bringing this information to light. Okay, I'm gonna be quick because we, I think we have one fire talk left, right? And my bladder might not last, so TMI, anyway. Um, plus 10 for repeat fire talk. Plus 10 for longer research iteration period. I really liked your timeline and the fact that, you know, you came here last year, you did some work, you went out, you did more. You, you know, I, I thought that was, um, that, that the fact that you rethought it, you know, and, and tried to do some other stuff with it was really good. Um, Excellent banter, the speaking style, you guys were seamless going back and forth, which is hard, hard to do, to do really yeah. hard. Um, so that's like super pro, plus plus. Um, so the question, the, the difference in the survey thing, mm -hmm. when I was reading the question over and over again, perhaps maybe my bribe interfered, but I didn't see... I didn't see the second question as applying to me. I saw it applying to within my org, but not targeted to me. So was there a different question that actually led you to the, the direct, like, oh, they, they feel this you know, towards them, or is that like a presumption? So the, I have to look through, but we may have abbreviated it to make it fit on the slide, but basically it says a sanctioned test in your organization. Yeah, run, and so. Run by your, by your coworker. Right, a sanctioned test in your organization, but, Still, I feel like there's ambiguity there that maybe 
coloring your results. So, I mean, that's just like a, a suggestion about that of if you really want it to be about the me, yep. then you should explicitly say that. Because I, reading that, if you had given me that survey, I would have looked at it like, no, I want my org to be stronger, and I wouldn't have actually placed that on me. I would have placed it as the whole we, right? Which is different. Um, and then, let's see. Okay, so I had this a similar kind of question last year. I understand it better this year, but the, the, the vein of my question is, the premise is internal red teams, right? Sanctioned, or just sanctioned tests. This is authorized. Authorized, yeah. Right, so why are we caring about the feelings of those being tested when the attacker don't give a fuck, you know? So to, to answer that question. Hey, this is the adult program tonight. All right, folks, let me yell. To answer the question, um, so it's, it's super valid. Like, it, if there is a threat that you need oh. to test, you should test it. But the question is, do you test it with your own internal team? Do you test it with an external team? Or is it so bad or whatever that, you know, you go to just a tabletop scenario? So, I mean, we didn't focus on that in this, in this scenario, but that's the stuff that we talked about last year in that, you know, like, some things are just too bad. Like, yes, there are threats. Someone could blackmail you. It happens all the time, right? But do you want to expose someone where, you know, there have been cases uh, on our GitHub site where people have committed suicide because they, they reacted so poorly to being social engineered. So. Um, wow, okay, yeah, so that additional color makes me understand why, why you're doing this. So anyway, um, just to wrap it up, plus 10, the request for help, the call to action, it's wonderful, and I love reference slides. Ooh. I love them. So plus 50 for me on that. I just awesome. nerded out. Thank you so much. Thank and you for your plus, generosity. Plus 10 for your shirt, Roy.